Aspire magazine welcomes to, uh, to, to St. Martin's um, Dr. Kichak from, from LSC London. Um, we are um, just about to, to, to pose some, some questions to, to Dr. Sharp um, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll get to know um, some, some, of, some, some of his opinions. Dr. Sharp, you have been just about a year right now as, mm -hmm. as uh, Director of London's International Programme at LSC. Um, what does this entail and what are your plans for the immediate and far future? Well, that's a very good question. Um, it seems like only five minutes, but it has been a little bit over a year now. Um, I think I've clocked up getting on for 200,000 air miles in that year. So one of the things I do a lot of is visiting our teaching centres all around the world. Um, this, to my shame, is my first visit to Malta. I've been trying to get to Malta all year, but uh, this is the first time I've actually made it. I'm very glad that I now have. Um, so I spend a lot of the time visiting uh, our teaching institutions, trying to meet with students, meet with our teaching staff in the, in the institutions. Um, but also uh, a lot of work goes on in um, developing the program, making sure that the subject guides are developed and up to date, making sure that the VNE is up to date, mm -hmm. always looking for new opportunities for new courses which we can put on. Um, plans for the future, well there's quite a lot of things going on at the moment. One of the more exciting ones is that uh, we've developed uh, a foundation program uh, which will be launched next year. So this is for students who don't meet the entry criteria for the degree or the diploma can take a foundation program before they come off to that. So that's uh, an LSE-led program. In can, preparation for the actual degree? In preparation for the degree. So it will be instead of A-levels. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, it will also give students access to UK universities, including the LSE, if they do well on the, on the program. Um, and it's really been designed to equip students for the skills they need to come on to the degree programs. So there's maths and stats in it, but the structure and the design is very much a mirror of what we do on the degree programs with subject guides, with the VME. Okay. Um, so that's been a lot of work, but it's been very enjoyable to develop that. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing we've been focusing on, and I think we'll continue to, is the sort of support that we can give to the teaching centres around the world, particularly our affiliate centres like mm -hmm. St Martin's. Um, I think it's very important that we provide um, as much um, advice, but also listen to the teachers who are teaching the courses so that we can, for example, get feedback on how the different courses are, are running, whether we need to think about making changes for the future. Um, so we're looking at ways of working much more closely with the uh, teaching centres. For example, we will, in January, um, we will, our new Head of Learning and Teaching, Lynn Roberts, will join our mm -hmm. office. And Jim, uh, Lynn's responsibility will be to work particularly closely with teachers mm -hmm. in the institutions to um, help develop their skills as teachers. She's a very experienced trainer. She, for many years, trained the LSE academics to become better teachers. And so we want her to be working with the institutions so that we can collectively develop the teaching techniques and the, really the quality of the learning experience for our students. That is indeed quite a lot for, for just a year, basically, but it, it, it is also gives, the, gives us the insight that there is um, so much to look forward to. Um, um, as regards to the value of degrees today, you know that um, students are being, being literally um, created so randomly by, by various um, universities, um, so many hundreds and thousands of, of, of um, university students, graduates. Um, what is the value of a university degree today? It's a very good question. Um, of course, what, one, of the, one of the things we have to take into account is that there are many more university degrees available to students today than there were 20 years ago. There are more universities, not just in the UK, but around the world. Um, there is more variation, I would say, in quality of universities as well. Many parts of the world have seen some universities set up which perhaps are not as um, high quality as they might be, where the local regulation has not been strong enough, um, and where universities with really quite, quite low standards um, have been allowed to be established. And this is a problem because education is not like some other goods where the consumer has 
access to accurate information about that, those goods. If you're going to buy a car, it's pretty difficult for the car companies to conceal the fact that that particular model keeps breaking down mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. this becomes public knowledge very soon and this knowledge enters the public domain and so has a massive effect on demand for that particular kind of car. Education doesn't work like that because the consumer, if you like, the student, doesn't always know until much later, often until it's too late, that the quality of the education they're receiving is not good enough. Um, and of course, by quality of education, what I'm really talking about are academic standards, the level of achievement that students have to reach. You can have quite a fun time at university, but actually learn nothing of any value. Um, and so, yes, of course, the degrees uh, in the world, uh, there are degrees, of course, which are of great value to students, but it's more of a minefield, I think, for students today to negotiate the what is increasingly a global offering of degree courses. Um, I mean, it's not just true in Malta that overseas providers offer their degrees here. In virtually every country of the world, you have a situation where overseas providers, not just from the um, usual countries like the UK, United States, Canada, Australia, but increasingly from countries that previously didn't export higher education. We're now seeing Indian universities setting up around the world. We're seeing Malaysian universities setting up around the world. Um, increasingly, we're likely to see Chinese universities establishing branch campuses and relationships all around the world. So the range of choices available to students practically anywhere are considerably greater than they were, but I'm not sure that they are always in a position to to navigate those choices and make the right decisions. So I think it is a it is an increasingly difficult time for students to make the the right choices. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, one other question, the penultimate question, actually, um, is is um, the competition in, in the graduate world a reality? Um, in the sense that we're not talking about levels of education now, we're talking about graduates who are competing for the same job. Yes. And uh, if, this, if this competition is, is a reality, and I believe that it actually is a reality in, in a way, um, <coughs> is it sustainable by, by today's standards? Uh, well, it's certainly a reality. I mean, for the best jobs, there, there is competition. I don't think there's anything particularly new about that. I think what we now find, though, is that there are more graduates. There are more universities, so there are more graduates. When I went to university in the UK, about 10% of the population went into higher education. Now the, uh, now the figure is above 45%. So a large number of people are getting degrees. Um, so logically, there must be more competition amongst graduates for jobs. What I think this leads to is a much greater differentiation between graduates. There was a time when merely being a graduate was enough to secure a job. That's not the case anymore. You've got to be a graduate from the right university, and you've got to be a graduate with the right level of degree. I mean, the higher the grade of the degree, the better. Um, the subject of the degree matters as well. But increasingly, uh, employers are looking, I think, from beyond the degree. What else can you offer? Um, yes, you've got a degree, okay, so have most of the other applicants, but what else can you bring? So they're looking for additional skills you might have. And again, skills you might have acquired in the course of doing your degree, you know, intellectual skills, problem-solving skills, analytical, mathematical skills that you can transfer to other contexts. They're also looking for experience. So um, if you're a student, um, doing a degree in the normal way, have you, have you gained any work experience? Have you done an internship? Have you worked even in a voluntary capacity in, a, in an area which is relevant to what you want to subsequently do? Because they want to know that employers will want to know that you, um, you know something about that kind of field. And also it points to your motivation. If you've troubled yourself to gain some experience in an area uh, and you're still keen to pursue a, a career in that area, it says, something about your motivation to do it. So I think what it means is graduates certainly have to work harder, they have to sell themselves much harder, um, they have to look at ways of differentiating themselves from the others. Um, I, I mean, I have to say, I think something like doing a University of London degree um, is, a, is an excellent way of demonstrating to employers that you, you've really had, had not just the, a 
ability to succeed on a particularly tough course, but you've had the motivation and staying power to see your way through it. And I think given that employers do know and they do understand the differences between degrees, um, it's tough at the time, but it's probably good in the long run if you, want, if you do want to succeed in that competition to put the extra work in to get a, a really good degree from a good university. True, very true. Um, you were talking about skills, mm -hmm. which, which can be attained um, in, in the course itself. Mm -hmm. um, at St. Martin's, we have created the Study Skills um, mm -hmm. Program, mm -hmm. which, is, which, was, which was also an offshoot of, of programs um, initiated by the mm -hmm. University of London mm -hmm. itself. Um, would you would you um, tell our students that it's something something positive to to um, give the, all their all their interest to these programs because um, most students believe that um, the transition from sixth form to, to university is not so fast mm. as it actually is mm. but when they actually set foot in university they suddenly start realizing that their essays are not really um, as they should be mm. um, they don't know some skills like simple skills like report writing. Mm. Um, presenting themselves, um, organizing a meeting. Um, would you think that these programs are something that um, should be created and are there to stay? Yeah. Well, very much so. And in fact, that is the key role of the teaching institution, uh, like St. Martin's. This is what we add to the basic program that we've developed. Um, I think it's important for several reasons. I think it's important, first of all, because, as you, as you pointed out, um, there is a step up from studying at A level or whatever equivalent people have done to degree level study, particularly on our degrees. Um, it is not about memorising facts, it's not about repeating facts. Um, students are often very good at doing that. It's about, uh, it's about analysing questions, it's about dissecting questions, it's about looking at the role of evidence in answering questions. Um, it's the ability to be creative, to think of new ways of approaching a problem. And these things don't come naturally. You have to learn how to do these things. Um, and so the first reason why uh, these sorts of additional programs are vitally important is it actually makes you do better on the course. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can be the difference between a mediocre degree and a really outstanding mm -hmm. degree. And I, and I don't exaggerate in that sense. The question I'm asked most often really is, you know, what do students have to do to go from a, a mediocre grade to a really top grade? And certainly for the majority of subjects, it's all down to their uh, analytical skills, but also their ability to communicate the fruits of that analysis um, in exam context. Mm -hmm. And by learning those techniques, by practicing those techniques, it's almost reorientating your mind to looking at problems in a different way. Um, students are in a much stronger position to do better. So in a very simple way, I would say to the students, you know, do this course because you're going to do better as a result. The second reason is that it's all about, um, it, it helps to develop and also to identify the sorts of skills that employers are going to want later on. Um, I've touched on some of these, but um, when most students finish a degree, it's quite difficult if you say to them, well, what skills have you learned? And they'll often reply, well, I've learned all about economics. Mm. Yeah, you've done an economics. Of course, you've learned all about economics. So what else have you learned to do that might be of interest to an employer? And, and it's there where things like, well, one of the things that our students are very good at doing is um, analysing a problem mm. or identifying what the potential answers to a particular problem might be. Um, so this is a hugely important skill in any work context particularly if you're going to take a leadership role mm -hmm. or a strategic role in an organisation. Mm -hmm. You know, you understand strategic alternatives. Your mind is attuned to identifying alternative approaches Not to just a particular the problem. usual route. No, you don't just follow them. Exactly, you don't just do what people have done before mm -hmm. you. So by training your mind in these critical thinking skills and in these analytical skills, you are not only helping the students through their degree, but you're helping to identify the sorts of skills that they need to um, raise when they go for interviews. And the, the question the interviewer asks are, well, you know, what can you contribute to our organisation? Well, I've got a degree in economics. 
That doesn't really answer the question, what does your degree in economics mean you can do for us? Say, well, when confronted with a complex problem, I can break that problem down into its component parts. Um, I can solve that problem for you. I can use data to solve problems. And it doesn't matter that the problem is in economics or the problem is a business strategy or the problem is a human resources problem. You approach problems in a, in a logical, analytical and creative way. And I think one of the things about your program that I've seen, uh, which, which is hugely impressive, is that it, it actually encourages students to do that explicitly, to identify those skills rather than just leave them there in the background without really realising they have them. After all, if they don't realise they have them, how can they sell them to an employer? We just make them aware. You make them aware. But you also help them to develop, to develop them. Excellent. Um, and finally, mm. um, uh, what is the role of a graduate in today's society? Well, I think this touches on what we were just talking about, because one of the things I, um, I often point out to our students is that um, the content of what you're learning now um, will probably be out of date, most of it, in five years. Uh, it'll almost all be out of date in 20 years. Mm. Common basic principles of any discipline remain, but the substantive details will have been overtaken by new research, new developments, new ideas, new thinking. Um, I, I graduated from the LSE in 1987 in sociology. Um, I don't, when I teach sociology today, um, I don't really use very much of the material that I studied in the research. 1980s mm -hmm. because uh, the subject has moved on. Yes, I know how to think like a sociologist. I know some of the fundamental principles and founding fathers in sociology, but in terms of the major developments in sociology over the last 20 years. These are the exciting things, these are the interesting things. So the role of the graduate is not just about possessing a lot of knowledge of a particular subject. What it should be about is the ability to develop with that subject, or indeed other subjects. It's, in the most simple sense, it's the ability to learn. It's the ability, once you've left, to continue learning new things, new disciplines, new content, throughout your life. You know, you should be able then to be a, what we call a lifelong learner or an independent learner. Now to me, that is really what the role of the graduate is. It's the person with the skills, with the confidence, mm -hmm. with the ability to adapt. I mean, most graduates now will, first of all, um, change their career. They will probably change their career up to five or six times uh, in the course of their working life. Their working life is going to be longer than it ever was at any other time. The UK, for example, has now abolished effectively the retirement age, so the opportunity is there, as in the United States, for people to continue working forever. We're living much longer. So consequently, our knowledge on graduation is going to be more and more out of date the more we go through our career. So what we should be teaching graduates and equipping graduates to do is to, is, is to move, is to innovate not only do they need to react to the changing environment they're in, but they need actually to create that environment and to change that environment and have the ability to say, in any situation, look, I've looked at this, this is not working, this is no good. How can we do it better? What skills do we need to do it better? And to be able to um, change, if effectively change their environments for the better. Now, I think that's what graduateness is all about, if you can use a term. It's, it's, it's about having those capacities, that confidence, those skills. Um, it's a lot less about, yes, you do learn a lot of things, uh, a lot of detailed mm -hmm. things, but in a way they're just examples um, to help us move on to the next stage. It's very different from, if you like, training to do a particular job, to be a, an airline pilot or a train driver or a, a deep sea diver. You know, you learn the specific skills to do that job. That's not the same as the skills that a graduate has. They might have those other skills as well, but they have all these additional things they can innovate, they can learn, they can develop. Bishop, thank you for being here with us today. It's been a privilege having you. Um, we really thank you for being with Lucas Pine, spending some of your very precious time from your tight schedule. Uh, we really hope to see you again someday in the future. Thank you so much. You certainly will. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.